got a great question from Daryl. So thanks, Daryl, for submitting the question. The question is, I have a digital mixer. Digital mixer includes a bunch of audio processing functionality, such as equalization, compression, limiting, signal delay, and the like. Those features can be applied to the output buses. That being the case, is there any point to buying an amplifier that is the DSP version that includes a lot of that kind of functionality in the amplifier. Do I need an amplifier that has compression, limiting, equalization, and the like, if I already have those features built into my digital mixer? Well, you could argue that it's a bit redundant. But if it were me, I would still purchase the amplifier that includes DSP, provided that the price difference between the non-DSP version of the amplifier and the DSP version isn't extreme. And it really shouldn't be because the DSP functionality is just software, so that shouldn't be super expensive to implement. I think the DSP version of the amplifier is just more flexible, more feature rich. And for a small additional price, I think you get a lot more functionality. If you don't want to use the DSP features in the amplifier, just click bypass on that and use it as a standard amp. I think there are some places where those features are better delivered at the amplifier level. Uh, for example, if you want to apply some limiting so that large signals, if they come through the system, won't drive the amplifier into overload and distortion, you could apply that at the mixer. You could put some limiters in on those output channels of the mixer. But you have to get the thresholds and all the parameters set just right so that the limiters kick in right before the amplifier is about to hit maximum power. And that can be a little tweaky to set up. Whereas if you have DSP built right into the amplifier, the manufacturer has all of that stuff pre-calibrated, if you will. And so on the DSP menu, you can just set limiting to occur at minus 1 dB, minus 2 dB, minus 3, whatever. And you don't have to worry about the gain scaling between the mixer and the amplifier, where the amplifier's level controls might be sitting or any of that stuff. It's just uh, right there, and it's very easy to set up and control. The other thing is that it's more likely for things to go out of adjustment at the mixing board. Uh, show to show with the mixing board, it's possible for you or somebody else to go in there and adjust a knob and change your settings. It's less likely to get changed inside of the amplifier DSP. So if you set something like limiting on the amplifier in its own DSP, chances are nobody will accidentally adjust that and mess it up. Whereas in the mixing board, somebody might tweak a setting, make another adjustment, which invalidates where those parameters are set. A place where the DSP in the amplifier is a good idea, I think, is if you're using the amplifier as a crossover. And so you have a sig signal coming into one of the channels in the amplifier, which then gets split across the two sides of the amplifier, and one side it's providing highs, and the other side it's providing lows. And you can use the amplifier's DSP functionality to act as an electronic crossover, and you can control all of the parameters for exactly what those frequency breakpoints are going to be, perhaps the slope of the filters, and uh, the output levels of the high versus low signals. And all of that is built right into the amplifier, so that's very convenient. You could replicate that functionality with your digital mixer, but to do so, it's going to require two separate output buses, one for highs, one for lows, and you need to set up separate filters in those buses that work well together with each other. So you can't just set up a single breakpoint. You need to actually set up the low filter and the high filter and make sure that they're set up so they're going to work well together and then go out to drive the amplifier. So I think if you're using an amplifier in a bi-amp mode, it's easier to do it with the DSP in the amplifier because you can just send one signal from your mixer to the amplifier and let the amplifier do the work. It saves you the use of one of the output buses. And output buses are usually valuable real estate. 
Now, it could be argued that there's no need for equalization in the amplifier if you've already got equalization in the mixing board. And that's perhaps true and even more true today than it used to be. Back in the day, it was pretty common for me to have an equalizer in the mixing board or beside the mixing board, and then another equalizer in the amp rack itself. And the idea was that I would set the equalizer on the mixer to be flat. And then I would take the system outside into a big open space where there's no room reflections or any interaction going on, a big anechoic space. And I would run a calibration tone into the system, run some pink noise, analyze the performance of the system with a tool like Smart, um, or whatever you have available to you, nothing else, use your ears. And I would adjust the equalization of the PA system using the equalizer that is in the amplifier or in the amp rack so that the system had relatively flat response. I would calibrate the PA system with the equalizers that are in the amp rack or in this case in the amplifier. And so that way I know if I send flat material from the mixer into the amp rack, the system should sound right. And then I'd go to various venues, and in these different rooms, each room would have its own particular set of characteristics, and I could adjust the system to taste within that room with equalizer that's at the mixer. And so therefore, the equalizer at the mixer I would use for correcting the room. The equalizer in the amp rack is pretty much set and forget, and that's a calibration for the PA system itself, which wouldn't get changed unless something changed in the PA system, for example, a different set of speakers. And that way, as I went from one venue to the next, I could easily just reset the EQ that's at the mixer without disturbing my baseline settings that calibrated the PA system itself. Now, these days with digital EQ, you could argue that all you need to do is just set the system baseline, save that as a preset, and then as you go from one venue to the next, you can adjust that preset to correct for the room issues. And then at the end of that show, you just recall the preset setting back to its original state, which just corrects for the sound system, not for the room. So maybe it is a bit redundant, but... I kind of like to think about it in terms of one EQ for the room, one EQ for the system. And so I could see myself with the DSP amplifiers having the EQ curves baked into those amplifiers. So I know if I just send a flat signal from my board, the system should work right. And any adjustments I make at the board are just to adjust for behavior in that room or that environment that night. So those are some of the reasons why I would still choose an amplifier with DSP if it was an option for me and it wasn't a huge additional expense. Like you mentioned in your question, most or all of that DSP functionality in the amplifier is replicated by your digital mixing board. So yeah, I wouldn't say it's a showstopper. I wouldn't say it's you know necessary to get an amplifier with DSP because you can do all of it with your mixer. But I think there is some convenience factor in having that functionality in the power amp itself. And I think it makes the power amp a bit more flexible. Uh, maybe someday you'll use that power amp for some application and you won't have all that functionality in your mixer. And it might be handy to have. So I think that if it's not super expensive to add on, it might be good value. That's my opinion. Um, I uh, appreciate the question, and if you, you all have questions that I think have wide appeal, I'd love to make a video response to those as well. So thanks for tuning in. Hope it was informative for you. And I hope that uh, if you haven't already, you choose to subscribe to the channel. If you do subscribe, click that bell so that you're notified when new stuff drops. Catch you again soon on another upcoming video.